Hey guys, Ari here, and we're back with another Brit Lane vlog. It's Friday, they said it's Sunday, what? Anyway, oh, it was so cringy, but I'm keeping it, I'm fucking keeping it. So, um, before I start the video, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, helps the channel grow, get out to more tradesmen out there, more viewers, more DIYers, anyone interested in the ways of masonry brick laying stone masonry and stuff like that you know it gets it all out to those people gets it in recommended a majority of my views don't come from subscribers they come from just random people coming across the videos so it helps get out to new viewers to help the channel grow and and help me get a better quality uh, production value under my videos so today we're in the other side of that gable uh, we did a gable and a back yesterday uh, it's 900 a uh, high worth of stone, so six cores of stone, a 150 millimeter gauge per piece of stone. And that's what, uh, that was a, a question I got last video. Uh, I know I waffle on a lot in my videos and I go off a bit off topic, but it's just the way I am. So, uh, I was, obviously I was solo today, got to site about half eight, sort of regular time for me, but I had to set off earlier because this site's about an hour away. Uh, but I come here as a favour for somebody I work for because, you know, it's a, the site's coming to an end. I think this is the last garage on the job and uh, the last and the last building build period, really. Other than, I think, a few bits of toppings, on, a few walls and a few bits of copings. So, um, uh, my old man had loaded out this side of the gable all the way up with stone. Uh, I couldn't get any lifts this morning because I looked over and there was tons of barriers right where I need to get my gear. Uh, I shouted over for some blocks, but driver couldn't get to them. There was some hidden under this bird cage that I'm stood on here. Um, sorry, I'm just going to use my Vix inhaler. And, uh, you know, just I just was struggling to get the gear I wanted. So uh, I, got, I just carried on working, to be fair. Carried on working. Um, I just didn't get the lifts really. We didn't have any more mortar either, so we were, I was just using this 3D already mix still. I put about a bucket and a half of water into it. You fucking asshole. Anyway, sorry, someone's pipping outside my window. Anyway, so I uh, just thought, fuck it, right, use this mix up before it gets so solid that I can't use it. And then, and that was it. I got to like 12 o'clock, and I actually said to the forklift driver, is there any chance you can get me some gear? Give me some box or some good, some more mortar, and he said the mortar's just arrived, and uh, he brought it over. I emptied the, out the old shit out of the old tubs; that was all gone solid. And then I just thought, ah, I'm gonna call it a day. Um, I tried to pick the lintel up, but it was so heavy. I definitely need forklift to help me with it on Monday. So, um, management there was got told by someone that I'd have it done today. I didn't even know myself. I just presumed. I thought I'd look at how much work I had to do. And I thought, ah, oh, it's easy three days there. So I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, you know, trying to kill myself or anything. The manager wasn't happy or leaving, but it's the first early day I've had on a Friday in six months and I was full of cold. So I was like, one pit, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Um, you know, that's why I'm unpopular with a lot of sites. People don't like the way I work in a sense. I get that late. You know, I don't, I sometimes finish early. Uh, I get loads done, but. You know, the more you do, the more people expect. So it's, you know, I'm not always popular in management. I just refuse to, I refuse to take the knee in a sense. Um, when it comes to trying to work to these programs, I've said in multiple videos before, I think a lot of them are really unrealistic. And um, a lot of the time when you're rushing, that's when injuries occur. I never rush. I just work, at, you know, what some would call a plodding pace, but a pretty quick plodding pace and I just get plenty done in a day. If I start rushing, that's when I start twisting awkwardly, hurting my knees, shoulders, back, stuff like that. That's my biggest thing that I recommend to anyone. Don't let anyone try and push you beyond your limits. Um, we all know what we can do in a day. Uh, us price workers or even day workers, we know what we can do in a day and we know what's manageable. Um, and like for myself, full of cold today still. It's not COVID, I had a test. It's just a cold, guys, it's just a cold. And, uh, you know, you know. Sometimes you've got it. You can only do what you can do, and that's that's where you know I, fi I find in this modern day with uh, this big this boom on at the moment in building because of the shortage of bricklayers in the UK and 
you know shortage of ground workers and houses in general there's a massive push from these managers and it's not just them it's the managers above them and the managers above them pushing them and it, it does cause you know it does cause people to get stressed out you know it causes aggro and then that's where sort of the mental health side you know the mental health issues start kicking in i've done some videos on mental health before i'll do more in, i'll do more in the future um because that's something that people don't talk about you know stressful management and stuff we already have a highly taxing job um physically uh, stressful uh and then we get you know bombarded from you know exterior factors you know management etc et and you know what a guy a lot of them don't realize what it's like to be stood out in this fucking 25 degree heat sweating you you know sweat dripping off you fucking picking lumps and lumps of stone up all day laying it uh and then you you know you get finished off you stand back have a look you think oh, that's good and then someone says you're not done enough you need to keep going you know uh it's it's one of them you know that's where the disparity between management and the worker it's real it's uh it's frustrating sometimes but you just gotta deal with it and uh and just tell it how it is stay honest be transparent with you with, you know with people and be straight up and people can't knock you for that you know i'm you know i've i'm always stuck to my guns i told it how it is it's not popular but it's just uh you know it's just what works for me and at the end of the day we're all self-employed when it's pissing it down with rain fucking lashing it down with snow we're not ma we're not making a penny so uh, and and the and the house builders aren't, aren't bothered so you know you've got to just do what suits yourself in general um and do what you can manage do what you can manage do what you can handle and uh and take the days how it comes like today i wasn't getting my lifts i wanted uh i palleted up some gear in the compound at the other end of the site i wasn't getting it you know you just gotta accept some days so yeah that was my my little rap my little methodology sort of you know my uh, mentality rant over for the day um let's get back to the work at hand so uh, here you can see me brushing off the stone using a dust pan and brush brush bit of a stiffer plastic bristle brush um i probably need a stiffer brush still because i was having to really brush away at these stone faces to get them nice and nice and tidy um, the main thing I'm trying to do here is brush any snots off the stone, not so much the joints. The joints pretty much have a good a good um, finish with just the jointer. You're just brushing those snots off the stone, really, I find. When it's wetter, you can brush the joints a little bit and f fade it all in. Depends what finish you're going for. But I find this to, to give a pretty good finish, and I don't spend a lot of time joining it. I find it pretty easy to join. Also, as well... Um, uh when laying the stone as well you've got to sort of anticipate what piece you're going to pick up next have a look at the bond um sometimes it's not always best to pick the biggest piece up first um but in general i try and put the biggest piece in a can and and just you know always get that four inch lap and just be prepared um ideally with different size pieces loaded out um, especially if you've got labourer hands on, you want them with a tape measure, measuring pieces up, passing you them. Um, that's the fastest way, really. Um, especially if you're on price, obviously. And then, as well, uh, if you, if if possible, you want to familiar familiarise yourself with the different sizes of stone. If you're using mixed stone like I am, or mixed sizes, <coughs> get used to what sizes that come in a pack and then get your labourer or your, if you're working on your own yourself to load out the different size pieces all in three different stacks next to it next to the board and then just do just repeat that and you know every time which piece of stone to pick up right i need a 300 right boom i need a 400 boom i need a 200 because a lot of these stones come in like 300s 310 320 uh, 400 410 420 and then 200 uh, 190 220 and then they come in within 20 mil of each other so it is inconsistent because you don't have the same three sizes you just have three sizes to the nearest 40 mil so it's, it's sometimes it's sometimes frustrating because you know you're 10 mil away from having the perfect size piece but that's where you can sort of alter your joints a bit it is good to have um, tight joints every time but if you're 10 mil away from the perfect piece just just open every joint a couple of mil 
for the last few pieces of stone slide a piece in boom jobs are good and fill your joints up sorted um it's just a way to you know if you've got to cut a piece of stone you just kill it killing time um i'm not sure if a block splitter would be any good for stone i think it would just be too hard with this uh, with this sandstone i know a tungsten chisel is ideal great for cutting this sandstone tungsten tip chip bolster chisel um they're pretty specialist pieces of kit you have to go online to get them uh, but it's something i'm probably going to look into getting if i end up on another uh, another site with a lot of stone on um i'm pretty far away from where i live from any sort of stone unless i sort of go into a sort of sheffield way on but it's quite a ball to get to from doncaster where i live uh so it's mainly brick work i do a lot of the time but stone's a nice nice change and it's always good money because we're getting 35 uh including pointing the internals it's, it works out about 37 50 uh per square meter but this guy this place is paying up to 40 40 pounds a square meter in my area and then you know i had guys on youtube saying 55 and 65 pounds a square meter but a lot of the time the prices are dictated by what type of weight you're on so if you're getting 65 pound a square meter it might be only possible to lay four meters in a day um because if there's a lot of pillars or a lot of detail work or a lot of bays stuff like that whereas if you're on straight walls garages big long runs on like a house we get big long get sweeping gables you know you'll easily be able to smash your meterage in so sometimes you've just got, got to weigh up a job and say hold on a minute i might be only getting 40 pound a square meter here but there's loads of fucking meat to run in loads of good work to earn money on whereas you could go somewhere that's paying 60 pound a square meter which uh, which I have seen advertisements online, but it's few and far between. And it might be really awkward little bits of stone. There might be only like 10 meters squared to go at. You know, there might not be just a lot of work in front of you there. So a lot of the time, it's not always the price you're getting. It's what work you're doing. That's what you're earning you the money. Yeah, so as you can see me using my big ox hammer. I think it's the three kilo one, a solid forged handle. Uh, just with a normal uh, i'm using a footprint chisel uh ideal for getting through this stone always served me well really sheffield steel footprint uh, and um you know because I, I definitely recommend the heavier hammer you know the small the, the lighter lighter two kilo hammers and one and a half kilo hammers they just uh, they just don't have the weight behind them to get through it that first time and a lot of time with this a lot of time with this stone it takes two hits to get through it um whereas a lot of time uh with a little one you tap 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 it away and it's just a nightmare and uh, there's more chance of you hitting your hand because you're doing more swings uh but yeah uh also if i mentioned the sunglasses uh i'm wearing sunglasses again if it's ever sunny weather i always wear sunglasses it just takes the strain off my eyes stops me getting a headache uh, I had three electrolyte drinks today, three litres of water in the short amount of time over there. Only there like four hours, but got that five and a half metres in. Uh, I left a little bit on front as well. I didn't, a lot of times as well, a little tip for you guys when you're booking in. Um, just count your straight runs. Uh, leave your returns on, especially if you're going back on the job the next week or the next day. Just can't leave your returns for the next time you drop on it. Uh, or your rack backs, especially on the brickwork. And then when you're running that next gable, you've got a little bit of a bonus in front especially if you've got like a labourer you know what average labourers wage these days if you're in like a big gang it's normally like between 120 and 150 a day for a labourer so if you guys have left four rack backs uh on two gables that you've done in a big gang those rack bags that rack back all them rack backs could have played your labourer's wage for the monday um Normally, like labourers, if you're in a one on one gang, I think the going rates around like hundred pound a day, one twenty. Uh, just depending on experience as well. You know, a lot of guys aren't really experienced dog carriers. You know, you got a lot of young young guys coming into it, or or guys who are brand new to it. So, I know site labourers get around like twelve pound an hour. So if you're doing if you're doing ten hours, that's hundred and twenty quid. If you're doing eight hours, that's like hundred quid, whatever. So. I know like 12, 14 pound an hour for site labourers, I think. So that's sort of why I base my wages that I pay the old man on, you know, 10 to 12 pound an hour. Um, I think that's fair, that's fair, fair for anyone. I know that there's, there's guys uh, in big gangs where you've just got to pay the labourers more because they're working harder. 
Um, but especially in like one-on-one games, it's it's ideal as well if you're a labourer in a one-on-one to be able to pick up laying bricks. So you can, you know, you're like saying like you're learning to lay bricks at the same time as labouring. If you if the bricklayer you're working with is any good, that's definitely what I'm going to do when I next get next get an, a labourer to sort of fill in for my dad on on the uh, full time because he's going to drop down to two days a week I think at some point. And I'm going to encourage the labourer to, you know, try at least start pointing or getting on the trowel. And obviously still paying him late labourer's money. Uh, you know, probably I'm looking in the region like 100, 120 a day for a labourer. Um, if they're good, you know, but if they need a lot of help and a lot of guidance, um, you know, obviously they have time to grow into that. And, you know, and hopefully with more experience on the trowel, uh, you know, they can... Uh, start to earn more money if they get good so that's that's the that's the that's the ideal if you haven't had an apprenticeship and you want to get into bricklaying get it, uh, become a laborer for a one for one bricklayer and try again to teach you that's sort of what i'm going to do in the, in the future uh for my my next laborer uh, and or apprentice so that's me that my ideal is like apprentice and laborer and myself so i could two and one in a sense but not really uh, like one one and one <laughs> kind of thing three ones so yeah um yeah that's a that's my little that's a little topic for that um don't really have much else to talk about today full of cold so i don't really want to keep babbling on um i got this to do i got the lintel to lift on monday block work pillars to do blocks in the back of the lintel split across the top and that'll be all squared round, ready for wall plate on front and back. And then if I have any time, I'll just run some stoning uh, to the on each gable, just racking back. Um, I don't know how long, I don't know how, if I'll be coming back on Tuesday, I doubt it. I think I'll just be doing Monday here and then probably back on some boundary walls, presumably. Um, that's about it, really. I'm not quite sure for next week. Um, I'd love to know what, what work I've got in front of me in advance. That's probably what I'm going to have to do when I get a bit, a bit of a bigger gang. Uh, the only thing that will be just it'll help me is with a bigger gang is just having more work in front of me. Uh, that's the only thing that frustrates me at the moment. I can't organise myself too far in front. I just have to do it on the fly. I'm pretty quick at organising. So. so, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm going to put a bit of music on for the rest of the video. Thanks so much for the support. We've hit like 870 subs. We're almost at 900. Me, I've got my goal of a thousand um, in reach now, guys. So it's my birthday in a week. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. You know, just go down below the video, press subscribe on my channel, and it helps me out massively. And um, and you know, uh, help me increase the quality of the videos. Also, action cam coming in two weeks or less I'll probably get some footage within within two weeks i'm gonna buy a helmet mount so my part at get some really sick pick and dip footage pov style so anyway guys thanks so much for watching have a great weekend and if anyone's watching the football let's hope it's coming home this time guys i'm not a big not a big football fan myself as anyone who knows me knows but it's the first time it's going to happen, so it's coming home, guys. Right, have a good weekend and get some beer down here.